Picture this with me, if you will. Two women, one older, the other maybe just turned 20, standing right there in the middle of the picture, holding each other's hands, looking into each other's eyes, maybe there are tears. From the looks of things, they are talking to each other, having an important conversation, animated. They're leaning in. On the left side of the picture is wide open country, not completely flat, but expansive, maybe kind of lonely looking. And over here, on this side of the picture, what appears to be the, just the edge of a town. Have any of you all ever decided to take a road trip and take a little extra time to travel the blue highways, travel the state roads, where you stop every now and then at the towns instead of the interstates. We used to do that before kids came along. Then after the kids were grown, it takes a little bit longer, doesn't it? The blue highways, driving through nothing much more than corn and soybeans. Approaching the town, the first thing that you see maybe are a couple of houses that are up by the road instead of back in the middle of the farm. A business or two pops up. The grain silo arises over there on the other side of the tracks. Speed limit drops to 35. You go through the town, post office, laundromat, pizza place, diner maybe. Then after the blinking yellow light, you're done. On the other side, out in front of you is all there is to see. These two women, they're on the they're just on the outside of town. Just on the outside of town. The woman on the left, the older woman, the one with the fields behind her, her name is Naomi. The woman on the right, whose, whose back is to town, she's quite a bit younger. She could be a daughter or maybe a daughter-in-law. Her name is Ruth. And if you look very carefully, you can see a third woman She's just left the two, walking back toward the town, slowly, not totally convinced. She's Ruth's sister, Orpah, and she's just turned around to head back to Moab, her hometown, with Naomi's insistence. Orpah has done the responsible thing. She's headed back to the place where she knows, a place that knows her, a place where she'll be able to put her life back together now that her husband and her sister's husband have been gone for a couple of years. Maybe she can have a family again. That's what most of us want, right? A place. Some people. Most people, but in this case, not Ruth. Because for Ruth, it's all about following the one she had come to trust as her leader, her mentor. I listened, uh, I listened to the soundtrack of Hamilton on election day. It seemed appropriate. I am not throwing away my shot. There you have it, that's Ruth. Not to be denied. Finally, Naomi gives up trying to talk Ruth into going back home, and Ruth follows her like a stray kitten. She can't shake her. And there they go, headed out of town. Naomi and her daughter-in-law Ruth headed back to the land of Judah where, where there may be nothing at all for them. Naomi and Ruth walking into the unknown together. This is the context for this story, this beautiful story out on the edge of town where a decision or two gets made that has very important implications for the people of God. But now I'll take you to another place, if you will, where the story also has a different kind of life. Actually, this place, this sanctuary, where this story has often been read. No communion table, no pulpit. Over here, you can see maybe five bridesmaids all wearing burgundy tea-length dresses. Oh, over here on the side of handsome men in black tuxes and burgundy vests. They're not so used to being dressed up, but they're taking one for the team. And of course, right there in the middle, right there in the middle is the couple in front of the kindly old minister. Couple. 
beautiful bride and groom, or bride and bride, or groom and groom. There were tears when she walked down the aisle, but now the, the two are grinning at each other like they're sharing a little private joke. But the minister is obviously reading from the Bible. In fact, the Bible is turned to the book of Ruth. And it looks like he is reading his very words we just heard. Do not press me to leave you or to return from following you. For you go, I will go. Isn't it interesting that these words spoken originally by a daughter-in-law to her mother-in-law have become words we hear so often at weddings, where men become husbands and women become wives. Wouldn't it be fun sometime if during the wedding ceremony we had the bride turn to the mother-in-law-to-be, walk away from her husband and grab her mother-in-law's hands, Mrs. Mom, I promise I will never leave you. Such an honor is not normally accorded to the mother of the group. <laughs> it's so fun to think about how this ancient story of two refugees out on the edge of town has made it into the modern day lexicon of wedding ceremonies, squeezed into that short space between all the preparation and the big old party. Wherever you go, I will go. I love it. And it does work in that setting, doesn't it? Because this text calls us to follow. And if there is anything that is true about good marriages, it is the willingness of not one, but both parts of the couple to follow, to practice the ancient art of following. Of course, Naomi is doing the leading, right? And I think we all know who Naomi is in this story, don't we? I, I began reading a story from this morning a week or two ago, and Naomi just came clearly into focus. Naomi, the one whose time had come to leave, had no other choice. Naomi, out there perhaps in a caravan, making her way through Mexico to what she doesn't know, but away from a place she can no longer be. Naomi, driving away from her burning home in a place called Paradise, Forced to leave. Naomi, she might be a little closer to home on a Greyhound bus to have her baby in a place where no one will know her, but someone will be there to receive the child and raise it with love. Sometimes it's time to leave. Or maybe Naomi's even closer to home. Our niece, Julie, after having lived the life of a performer, singing show tunes out on a cruise ship, playing country music at the Country Bear Jamboree in Pigeon Ford, just outside of Dollywood, and stopping the show night after night with Old Holy Night up in Lancaster, Julie has left all of that and joined the Air Force. Even as we speak, she is in basic training at the age of 38. I know I'm not telling y'all anything you don't already know when I say that sometimes it's time to leave. Just like Naomi did. Our faith tradition has a wandering way about it, doesn't it? Our faith tradition gives us a soft spot for those who decide it's time to leave and are out on the road outside of town. Then there is Ruth, the one who follows. Lately, I think following has gotten kind of a bad rap. We think of following, and maybe we begin to think of blindly following, in spite of all the evidence to the contrary. Lemmings marching into the sea. Or we think of following, and a one-sided relationship comes to mind, where one person is all leading, and the other is asked, or maybe even sometimes coerced, in the following. Think of following, and then we think of Twitter and Instagram. Following, noticing, but from a from a distance. I'm not sure that's what Ruth is doing here. The name Ruth comes from the Hebrew word reut, R-E-U-T, which means companion. Companion. Maybe Ruth's following Naomi is more like a friend staying up with another friend all night long until the surgery is over. I will not leave you. Or maybe Ruth following Naomi is like a soldier refusing to leave his injured friend out on the field. Nor will I return without you. 
Or maybe through following Naomi is like a father going through rehab with his 20-year-old son. Where you go, I go. Or maybe Ruth following Naomi is like a husband looking for base housing out in Colorado Springs while his wife is in basic training. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Maybe Ruth following Naomi is like two completely different families trying to make it work for the sake of their newly married children. Your people shall be my people. Or maybe Ruth following Naomi is like a group of Muslims going to a Shabbat service after an act of violence. Your God, my God. That kind of following, that kind of faithfulness, that kind of companionship is what Ruth brings to the story and to our tradition. Out there at the edge of town, that kind of following something we can all stand to get a little better at, right? Sometimes it is time to leave, isn't it? To start something new. Other times we're called to practice the ancient art of following so that our life companions will know and trust that they will never, ever be alone.